Hi, my name is Kathy Simple, and welcome to Co-Thriving Through Crowd Speaking. I thought this was just such an important tool to share with all of my tribe that I wanted to do a quick video uh, on it. I think it really has changed the game for people, who, especially nonprofits, but really anybody, just anybody that's passionate about their message and perhaps doesn't have you know, a big budget to help get the word out. So let's go ahead and dive in. We've got a lot to cover in a short time. I want to just tell you a little bit about uh, the, you know, the background of crowd speaking. The first on the scene was uh, Thunderclap, and that first came out in May 2012. So while it's relatively new, it has been around for a couple of years. It was actually uh, created by a, a very creative product development studio, studio. Excuse me, I believe the way it's pronounced is DD. It's DE dash DE. And they came up with that basically to blend their brand of storytelling and branding skills with their technical knowledge to create meaningful communication tools. So they kind of developed it in-house as an ad agency, but then released it to the public as a tool that we could all use. So it really came into the attention of the media around May 2012. So basically what it allows people to do is have their single message shared all at the same time on a pre-selected date. So people can opt in to share their social media updates via Thunderclap, and Thunderclap is the program that makes it all work. Newer on the scene is Head Talker. So Head Talker, I believe, launched in 2014. And from what I can tell, I've not used it yet. I've, I've uh, used Thunderclap for the few that I have done, either for myself or for clients. But the main advantage or point of differentiation that Head Talker offers is that it taps the power of LinkedIn, while uh, Thunderclap only accesses social networks, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. If you happen to have a strong B2B presence or just you know a large presence on LinkedIn, I think that would be a good reason to look at Head Talker as an alternative. But basically, either of these helps you, you know, helps you as well as your tribe connect with your account, you can create a campaign, and then you gather supporters. It's all pretty well explained on the Head Talker website itself, and we're going to go into that in more detail at the end, how to actually do your own. So why is this even important? We mentioned before that it's to help people get the word out. Well, when I started on the scene with my social media coach back in 2009, I was showing businesses and nonprofits alike how to create Facebook pages and post their messages there. And at that time, it was nearly 100% of their entire audience that became fans or later became likes of their page that would potentially see that message. That has really been on a strong decline in recent years. The screenshot uh, just shows a period that lasts from October of 2013 and ends in February 2014. But this scenario hasn't gotten better. If anything, it's probably gotten worse. So um, Facebook pages with greater than 500,000 likes actually have the very smallest percentage of people, fans, or people who have liked the pages who are going to see any given post. Uh, this survey that was done by Ogilvy, a fairly large and reputable ad agency, showed that in February 2014, that was just 2.11% of organic, uh, organic reach, which means non-paid or non-boosted content was being seen by Facebook page fans that had likes of more than 500,000. For smaller pages or just all pages blended, the average was a bit higher. At that time, it was 6.15%. I don't know the exact algorithm that Facebook uses, but I think that's well, well south of that number by now. So what this means is just that, you know, it takes a lot of effort to get Facebook likes. And then when we put out a message, we're seeing, you know, fewer and fewer and fewer people are going to actually see that message, which is kind of, you know, frustrating and a little difficult. So Thunderclap is one potential answer. This would be a lot of work to try to do this for every single post. So I would say that you probably want to reserve this tool in your toolkit for, you know, campaigns, um, maybe a product launch, maybe a crowdfunding campaign, anything that you really want to quote unquote go viral 
you know, that's a pretty crazy definition and people define that differently. But basically, how can you really, really beat the odds by breaking out of that, you know, 5% or less post on Facebook? So I think the best way to demonstrate this is just simply to go ahead and use a client example. So what I'm going to ask you to do, anybody who happens to be joining me live today, or if you see this video later, and it happens to be before September 13th, 2016, go ahead and just uh, click on it if you're watching the video, or type into your address bar, http colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash stop co 2016. And while you're doing that, I'll just tell you a little bit about this uh, campaign. Basically, this particular client is um, really interested in promoting carbon monoxide awareness. The client, Dot Kessling, is a friend and a client of mine, has been for a number of years. Her daughter, Lindsay, died at the young age of 22 due to accidental carbon monoxide poisoning. She grew up in LaPorte, Indiana, not awfully far from me. And so we certainly are trying to get the word out locally, but really globally. You know, carbon monoxide is a real danger everywhere, but particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, this time of year as it gets cooler is the time when most people take actions that typically lead to uh, carbon monoxide awareness. People might leave their car idling in the garage as winter weather sets in to kind of um, warm it up before they get in. A lot of motors are very, very quiet these days, and people can almost forget that the car is still running. People bring space heaters inside, things like that, which is not, you know, a great idea. The list goes on and on. But anyway, we have done a campaign each fall for the last few years, and just like all the other people who are having trouble getting the word out through their Facebook page, this year we decided to do a thunderclap to help us get the word out. So if you will follow along with me, we'd love it as um, kind of payment for this quote unquote, you know, free webinar. It is in fact free, but you can help us out by lending your voice. And basically what I mean by that is being part of our crowd speaking campaign, you are agreeing to donate your social media status on one or more of uh, the social media platforms shown here for Thunderclap, which is currently Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. So if you happen to have all three of those, you could actually support with all three. And what that means is you're basically opting in to donate your status on September 13th to show what's shown here on the screen in blue. This is what will show up on your behalf. Join the campaign to stop CO poisoning, share on social media, hashtag LOKCO2016. So that stands for Lindsay O'Brien Kessling, carbon monoxide, CO2016. And then the, um, the Thunderclap program or platform will actually just um, reduce that down for you. Okay, so some people are saying they cannot reach the short, shortened link. Let me just see if I can paste that in for you in the chat. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that works for you. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and put that in chat. Let me know if that works. Okay, so I just want to go through some of the decisions we made, and some of your decisions may be different depending on your unique situation. But when you go to start a thunderclap, you can choose uh, varying amounts of supporters that you want to opt in. And if you're familiar at all with crowdfunding campaigns, this works very similarly to some like uh, Kickstarter, I believe, is an all-or-nothing platform. In other words, you have to reach your goal, otherwise you don't get any of the money that is collected. And in this case, of course, there's no money, but there is, um, you know, the thunderclap. There's the big noise that's going to go off all at once on September 13th at our chosen time, which I believe is 8 a.m. Okay, so good. Uh, I'm hearing that you got the link to work. That's wonderful. Good. It is case sensitive. That's right. So please do use the upper lower and that should work for you. Okay. We chose 100 as the smallest level just because we had a relatively small list and we wanted to ensure success. If you go above the number that you commit to, that's no problem. But I don't believe you can currently edit your goal down. So if you reach 
you know, if you've set too high a goal, it's, I think the next one is 250 and you don't get it, then you'll get nothing on that day. So I don't really think you can go wrong by just choosing a small goal. If you're a very, very large organization, let's say you've got an email list of, you know, thousands, 10,000 or more, you certainly could go higher than that. It, it might not build suspense if you aim too low and you achieve your goal too soon. So other things that we did was um, we did choose a custom URL to promote this this campaign and by this campaign I'm talking about not the thunderclap itself but the campaign just to spread the thunderclap so uh, bitly stop co 2016 we felt like it had a little bit of branding it's a bit more memorable than a very very lengthy uh, campaign link we also chose a custom graphic in the header that we already had prepared that we've used in the past if you don't have something like that I would recommend canva that's like canvas without an s.com that will allow you to put together uh, text and graphics into a, a very very nice uh, little kind of billboard for your campaign and we chose a time frame of about 30 days I believe you can go as long as 60 however you know I think if you go too long you might again just kind of take people's eye off the um, urgency of it so I, I would say anything shorter than two weeks, you better be really, really prepared to, you know, make it happen and have that backup to ensure that you're going to be successful in such a short time frame. But you can play with it. Again, there's really no cost, but certainly it feels good to be successful rather than to fail. And then the other thing we decided is that we wanted to just brand this campaign with a hashtag. If you've ever started a hashtag before, that can feel like a very lonely pursuit, almost like hosting a party and nobody comes. You can't guarantee that there's going to be anyone adopting the use of that hashtag. But with a thunderclap or any kind of crowd speaking campaign that may come on the scene, whether it's Head Talker or some other one yet to be launched, you already know that you're going to have at least 100 people using it on that particular day, and hopefully it's going to have a ripple effect. The other thing that you can ask people to do is, you know, obviously you want to participate in your own thunderclap. So go ahead and donate your own Facebook status, your own Twitter status, and or Tumblr if you have it. And as you do so, uh, you can tell people, hey, I just participated in this thunderclap will you please join me by adding your voice? So that's another practical tip for making it successful. And then think about your landing page itself. You know, certainly you can have just a message and that can be it, but we actually um, put together a landing page and that's what this thunder.me forward slash, you know, T9, da, 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 will actually go to and it tells people more ideas about how they can get involved in the campaign. So obviously timeline is pretty important. You want to make sure that you're backing everything up enough so that uh, you're doing this well in advance of when your campaign actually launches. Our ca campaign just, you know, FYI, generally launches officially October 1st. And what we're trying to do throughout the months of August, excuse me, and September is to get people to agree to participate in that longer you know, campaign that begins in October. So it's kind of the campaign before the campaign, but it's really a great way to kick things off. And what you can see up here in the right hand corner is the number of supporters that you've got and the growing social reach that you're getting with each supporter as they donate their status. And also the ticking clock, you know, the time left kind of helps build in the urgency of how you're doing according to the campaign. So hopefully that's pretty clear. I think that usually once people are shown this tool, it's very intuitive actually how to use it, but it's just knowing that it's there and perhaps knowing, you know, when to use it that sometimes gets people tripped up. So let me go ahead to the next slide. All right, so if you'd like to start your own, it's actually very, very easy. You just click on either of these links, thunderclap.it is how you get to thunderclap or headtalker.com. And again, I would probably recommend you look at headtalker.com if LinkedIn is strong for you because as of today's recording, Thunderclap does not accommodate LinkedIn as a shareable status. So that's uh, something to consider. Headtalker is a little newer on the scene. Thunderclap is perhaps a bit more known. So you'll need to create a new account if you don't already have one or if you've participated in somebody else's Thunderclap or Headtalker campaign in the past, 
you can simply log in and then just begin starting your own campaign. You want to fill out all the blanks completely. And one little practical tip I will share is um, coming up with a place where you kind of do, uh, let me get out of the screen here. Sorry. Okay. Oh dear, pardon me. I, I recently changed to a different uh, platform than what I used previously for webinars. I'm still kind of getting used to navigating. But in any case, um, you know, you've got all of these predefined fields. So naming your campaign, the message that you want to share, the URL that you want to share. If you've got a video that you feel further explains your message, you can use that option as well. And it will show you how many characters are allowable for each 30 characters in the case of Head Talker for your uh, headline. 115 for the message and I really recommend that you type those out in advance on a word document and do a character count just to find out how close you are uh, because once you submit your campaign you will need to actually get it approved by each of the platforms it doesn't take an awfully long time I think it's generally less than a day or two but if you're in a hurry um, that can just be frustrating if, if you didn't think it through and you've got changes to make so go ahead and put it together on a scratch pad, create your uh, photo, your background photo, or your featured photo. Think about what you need to put in that. By creating that in Canva, that kind of allows you to add additional headline or additional you know, calls to action to further explain your message by layering text on top of graphics. So that's about it. Honestly, I mean, it's just filling out a form. You need to get it approved, uh, both Head Talker and Thunderclap want you to be successful. So though I've never had a campaign shot down, I would assume that part of their approval process is just making sure it's not, you know, inflammatory, you know, racist, sexist, anything like that. You got to, you know, comply with their terms of service. But hopefully they would also tell you if you're doing something glaringly wrong. If it's not obvious how to do it, then I just want to throw out there that CoThrive might be right for you. Um, typically, a lot of, you know, coaches that do what I do, including me, I offer private coaching and the rates can get pretty pricey, you know, for nonprofits or entrepreneurs, startups, that kind of thing. So with CoThrive membership, that's just $30 a month, really comparable to a gym membership. And as of right now, today's recording, I make myself available for six hours each week, either me or another facilitator. We help you, you know, do things like launch your own campaign, whatever social media question you might have, uh, all for $30 a month. So if that sounds interesting, just for giggles, I, you know, did six times $150 an hour and figured out that's $3,600 if you came to every, you know, one hour session of the six that's offered each week. So 150 times 24 is how I came up with that. And it's just $30 a month. So if you can't make it in a single month, you know, it's, it's not so bad. Um, you know, really it takes five months just to get to the cost of one hour. So if that's helpful, just know that that option is out there and it really attracts some very collaborative, creative people. In fact, I owe a debt of gratitude to another CoThrive member, Eric Lehman, who's in um, Ithaca, New York. He's actually the one that brought Thunderclap to my attention. And he said, hey, Kathy, you know, we've got a lot of members. This would be a great tool that we could offer one another is support whenever we do a Thunderclap if we already knew that we were going to participate and share in making one another's Thunderclap successful. That's just a very CoThrive-y model. So I just want to say a little bit about where the name CoThrive comes from. It, it's based on the ideas of permaculture, and there's something in the Native American tradition called the Three Sisters, where corn, beans, and squash are all planted into one whole. And you might think, well, wouldn't they take nutrients from one another? But no, they actually build on one another's strengths. The corn represents the stalk that uh, the beans can grow up and around. The beans fix nitrogen from the air, which can be used uh, to feed both the corn and the squash, and then the squash kind of keeps the weeds out. So I have just found that very organically, that's what happens in our CoThrive community. It's a great, great community. Members learn from one another. We support each other, and we're constantly bringing new tools like crowd speaking, like we're doing today. And those members are actually what makes this type of programming possible. Another exciting thing that we just launched this year is time banking. 
Time banking's been around for 30 plus years. And what I found is members didn't always just need my skills. Sometimes they needed to share skills with one another. And sometimes there wasn't the budget or perhaps trust needed to be earned. And with time banking, members can exchange services without exchanging money. This is not a time banking webinar, so I'm not going to go too much further into that. But if you want to find out more, you can go to cothrive.org forward slash time bank and see how you could get involved with that. If you've got more money than time, certainly I am still available to help people with one-on-one -on -one consulting and uh, strategic development or training at my first site, my original site, mysocialmediacoach.com. That's going, going strong, and I can certainly help. So that's about it. This is short and sweet because it's really just that easy to put on a thunderclap or any other kind of crowd speaking campaign. So I'd like to just open it up for questions. And if you'd like to give me a question, you can go ahead and put that in the chat area. Let me know. It's such a smart group that we've got. We've got uh, Mary. We've got Stephen. We've got Annette. I'm not sure if anybody else has joined us. Stephanie is here. I know you guys are all pretty sharp, so you might just have it already. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you in case it's easier. Okay, I've, I've unmuted you guys. Does anybody have anything they'd uh, like to just say? Kathy, this is Annette. Um, looking forward to my Gnomes Day out on September 10th. Underclap more about raising funds, or is it more about just causing awareness so people would know about the date and come. You know, it's a local event. Right. It, that's a great question. And we kind of, you know, glided over that pretty, pretty quick at the beginning. I had said, um, you know, you can use it really for anything. It's not purpose dependent, but it is, it is kind of a lot of work, you know, to do one of these. And so I'd say use it sparingly. I think you'll burn out your tribe if you do this too often. But um, so I think it's a great way to launch, let's say, a crowdfunding campaign or an event, you know, awareness type thing. Uh, okay. Let me go ahead and show you. Oh, this is crazy. I'm trying to uh, get out. Oh, I see. Okay, I've got to get rid of. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my own thunderclap and just show you by example how it works. And somebody is typing, it sounds like. I'm not sure who that is, but um, if it's not Annette, if you wouldn't mind muting yourself, I don't want to mute anybody who wants to talk. It's but, not us. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. But uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just click on my own to show you kind of the guts of it. Uh, so this, this link right here, that Thunderclap shortens itself, it goes actually to our campaign overview. So you could really do whatever you wanted here. Instead of campaign overview, you could make this the homepage for your Gnome's Day Out event. Mm -hmm. um, let me think. What, and then what would be your, your biggest ask? Or I think it's Well, my biggest thing is for people to be aware of it, buy mm -hmm. a ticket, and come. But it's so local, you know, someone in California wouldn't really have an opportunity, except maybe to make a contribution, I suppose. Right. So one thing you might think about doing then is instead of just creating your own hashtag is using a regional hashtag. And I believe your event is going on in Michigan City. Is that right? Yeah, it's unincorporated Porter County, but it's so close to Michigan City, people think of it that way. Okay. All right. Well, just in case you didn't know this, um, hashtags that are really, really big on Twitter for our area are hashtag NWI, or sometimes seen as NW Indiana. Also Michigan, oh. since it's up in, you know, kind of that area that's a little bit Michigan City. Um, Michigan City is kind of seen as part of Michigan. Right. So I'd say instead of trying to create your own hashtag in that case, but just kind of putting it in with a more regional awareness would probably get you more bandwidth that would be of import for you. Great tip. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, you bet. Anybody else have a question? Kathy, I have a question. It's Mary. Sure, um, Mary. Go right ahead. Okay, so I am launching a new, um, within my company, Mustard Seed Marketing, I, I'm, I have something that's called corestaff.org. I'm calling it a division of Mustard Seed Marketing. It's targeted to all the realtor associations across the country, and I just got my website 
developed and I, I really want to launch this out into a, roll this out in a big way. Is this something that could be used for, for that? Like, or even on LinkedIn, but I have a lot of friends on, on Facebook too, uh, that are, that would use my service. And I, I just want to, um, is, it, is this the right kind of thing or should I do something different on that? Right. Well, let me see if I understand what you're saying. Um, you want to basically tell people in your circle or tell everybody that you've got this new division within mustard seed marketing. Right. That I'm like hanging out my shingle with corestaff.org to, uh, so that realtor associations across the country can come and use my services either virtually or I will come to them. Basically that's the okay. Point. Great. Well, you know, let me just backtrack a little bit because you said Facebook is big too. When a thunderclap goes off, or um, head talker, it's not as if it only goes off on one of those platforms. It's just that people are donating their status on one of those platforms, right? Mm -hmm. But it's actually going to be posted on all three in the case of Thunderclap. It'll okay. go out on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, head talker just adds the LinkedIn option. So I would think because it's a business announcement that Head Talker might absolutely be a, a good one for you to take a look at in that. Right. Case. And yes. so, I mean, I, I, I would really like to think of this a, a bit more than just um, shooting from the hip, but I think you could title it something like, um, think about what is your catchiest thing that you could put out there. If, if it's going to help realtors, then um, maybe like new realtor resource, marketing resource? Well, it's for realtor associations, actually. So Okay. Um, realtor association yeah. marketing resource? Okay. Yeah. You might have to play with that. There are only 30 characters available in that <laughs> name. So that's really kind of <laughs> tough to get it down into something catchy. But basically, whatever you put in that title, right now I'm on Thunderclap specifically, but they, they both work fairly similarly. That's going to show up. You can see Stop CO the Silent Killer. It shows up here in red. So right. It's going to show up, you know, as your headline, right? So, in, like on right. Twitter, that would be a headline. And then the message, that's what your supporters are actually going to share on your campaign's end date. So, you want to make it simple, actionable. And so, maybe um, if you want people to opt in to an email list or give them some free tool you know, make it a really, really good offer so that you're likely to know who those people are that got that message, right? Because it's one thing to build awareness, but thinking it through, what's going to be a high value call to action that you can put out there that would be attractive to this amassed mm -hmm. audience? I think that's mm -hmm. really going to help, help your odds of success. Okay, that's great. And so then when I do a webinar or something like that, would I use then also, would I still use Head Talker? Like um, I have some webinars that are going to be scheduled soon. Would I use Head Talker to promote those? Well, again, I, I take it back through that checklist. You need to have okay. at least two weeks, probably minimum, to, right. you know, to launch one of these successfully and maximum 60 days. Okay. You're not going to want to burn out your audience by asking them to constantly, you know, participate in a crowd speaking ask. Right. So I would use those very judiciously. I don't okay. think I would personally want to burn out my audience by asking them to support one of these more than a handful of times a year, you know, probably right. not more than one a quarter. So again, I would pick, you know, what is your really, really big event that you want to use to drive awareness and think about the reasons that you yourself will share things socially. I think you're going to have more success if you're asking people to share something that they feel a personal connection to. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Thank if you it, so if, much. If it's just like, hey, how can we put money in this company's pocket? I don't think people are going to be as likely to share. With right. Ours, we're basically asking them to help save lives, you know, help stop yeah. CO poisoning. And even with that, it, you know, people are sometimes concerned about privacy or how does this work or just, you know, get lost in the technology. Mm -hmm. um, it probably depends a little bit on your audience, how tech savvy they are and, you know, how easily they're going to figure this out. But right. um, we did, you know, we do have some people that got confused by it, which is one reason, quite frankly, that I'm hosting the webinar. So I can share this <laughs> video and you're welcome to certainly share this video with anybody later too, just to explain I do have a, a much shorter version of it as well that just shows the click, you know, do that. Okay. Um, I think that would be more meaningful coming from you 
you know, mm-hmm. it gives you another chance to kind of brand and ask. But if, if you're doing something, you know, that's genuinely altruistic or, you know, bigger than you on behalf of realtors, I, I think that's probably going to be more successful of a messaging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there is definitely, and I don't want to take up all the Q&A on my... Oh, that's okay. We're mm-hmm. fine. I, um, so my big thing is that there's this thing called core standards that every local and state association has to comply with. And so I, I've been doing that for the state of Oregon for about a year and a half. And um, so certifying, and if they don't get certified, they can lose their charter, which is kind of a big deal. So a lot of these uh, groups are scrambling to meet their core standards on an annual basis and keep up with all the changes and things. So my call to action might be, you know, you know, don't lose your charter, get, you know, get your course, stand, you know, get on track with core standards or something like that. But right. that could be a rallying cry. Uh, the core standards, it, it's really, it's really burnt. It's their, it, it's their hot spot for sure. Well, and this is another reason I love to host these webinars and get people that are innovative testing out the ideas with me because in that challenge, you know, hey, I've got just a regional, regionally, you know, significant event. So, would Thunderclap possibly spill out too much for me? Well, you know, if you put the regional hashtags, then that kind of helps filter it a little bit, you know, for the consumer. Now for you, Mary, I guess my concern is who can make the decision to, to get help from you? Would that only be an association director? Yeah, it'd be the, the directors or their, uh, the volunteer leaders, like the local association president. Okay. Uh, to me, yeah. that feels like such an exclusive audience that, you know, many, many people that would get this thunderclapped message, it would fall yeah. on soil that where the, it's not going to really, you know, yield anything. Uh-huh. So yeah, think, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so I think maybe I should just go old fashioned and just use some sort of, you know, mail, uh, email targeted campaign. Just I, I want to I want to let everyone know that it's there and it's available now and, and how exciting it is to have some place to turn and, um, and how, you know, how, I don't, I'm not gonna say how affordable it is, but, um, but I am pretty affordable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's say you're a great value because I know you'd be offering value at any price, right? So, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that, you know, seven habits of Steve, of highly successful people by Stephen Covey. I keep coming back to that over and over again. It's like begin with the end in mind. What mm-hmm. does success look like? You know, and so if this campaign, you know, reaches tens of thousands of people or potentially hundreds of thousands of people, the way the internet works, the way that social networks work is we can't stop the geography. We can't stop the job titles, right? right. So you just want right. to make sure you use the right tool yeah and if you i I totally agree i totally agree yeah but great question and and these are great qualifiers well and thank you yeah it helps me to think through my process a little bit more before i hit the button on on the big share so yeah yeah but you know if you've got something else um i would think maybe even you mastering this tool and then offering it up to the the realtor organizations as a tool that they could show their realtors, you know, if yeah. you're just listing a house, let's say, I think, mm-hmm. I think this would be a really valuable tool. Yeah. I, that's what I am really excited about that. Cause the more I can, the more things that I can be the master of to share with others, mm-hmm. the better off uh, my little, my little entrepreneurial self is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, I'm not sure if the, you know, how they qualify their, their tech, uh, continuing ed credits for realtors or whatever, mm-hmm. but you know if if you could host a session like that and then the realtors could get CE, think about what a cool listing agent you would be, and and you could actually get the seller involved because every seller kind of wants to be actively involved in getting their, you know, sure. their new. Well, if they want to sit on their hands, that's for sure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so I think you're kind of co-creating solutions all the way down the line, you know. The, mm-hmm with the association, the association with the member realtors, and then the realtors with their sellers, the sellers with their, you know, their own network. So that, that's sure. kind of a cool idea. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, there's probably other ways too. But um, yeah, I, you know, I'd love to see you around CoThrive if, if that works for you. Um, yeah, I really, would, I really would like to do that. I, I hope that it's in, in my future. Good, good. Well, Stephen, you've been kind of quiet. Are you here with us? Do you have any questions or any comments? 
and Stephanie as well? No, I mean, I'm good. It's, it's just good to get the overview of this. So it's, it's helpful information, but I don't have anything specific okay. to ask, good. so thanks, though. Yeah, well, um, I know Stephen's going to be doing a heart math workshop, and we didn't have a whole lot of time on that one. But uh, that could even be good if you're doing a big workshop or an event that's ticketed, but it's a really cool event. You know, I don't think we've ever had a heart math workshop um, in Valparaiso, so that's pretty new as far as I know. Um, that might be something. Stephen's also a published author. He's had two books, so probably his next book. That I think that a, a thunderclap or any kind of crowd speaking campaign would definitely make a lot of sense for a book release, let's say. All right, well, any more questions? I'm certainly willing to, to answer some more. I just wanted to say, Kathy, that uh, this is Stephanie. Go read it, Stephanie. Okay, yeah, um, this is really neat. I mean, I really like this. Um, and I really like your social reach and kind of what you've touched on today. So I just really appreciate the insight into it. I think it could have uh, some pretty impressive reach. I do think though it is it is hard when you get into that category of who's the decision maker mm -hmm. and who's the person I'm likely to meet on social media. I know I run into that sometimes. Like, you know, you reach the gatekeeper, but they're not they're not the decision maker. And then to transition, you know, between who you reach and who actually makes the decision. Right. So you're, you're kind of uh, making this into more of a business idea. Can, can you elaborate a little bit about what you've got in mind? Um, you know, right now I don't really have anything specific in mind. I'm just thinking um, I work with a local business owner on business development and we've been doing a lot on social media um, and we want to break through into more commercial clients. And we're just trying to kind of figure out how to use social media to get to those commercial decision makers um, for like advertising and marketing. Okay. So it's just hard to kind of figure out on social media, how do you reach that top tier, I guess. Yeah, well, um, I probably need to think of, through this a little bit more thoughtfully, but since Head Talker does have LinkedIn mm -hmm. as one of their platforms, what I might consider doing in that case would be not to rely on Facebook so much, but really, you know, go for making it a more well-considered ask, you know, targeting perhaps LinkedIn groups or LinkedIn connections that have a lot of the types of decision makers you want to reach in their networks. Right. And can you just tell me again, I heard you say commercial, but I didn't get the full gist of the audience you're trying to reach. Um, just commercial and being uh, local business owners, restaurant owners, uh, hotel owners, and like property managers. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I, we, could, we could expand on it at a different time too, but I really like this platform. This is awesome. Yeah, but honestly, like the kind of just chewing on ideas, this is exactly what we do in a typical co-thrive, you know, work session. So, you know, love to have you there as well. Um, and you've, you've been a great Time Bank member. We really appreciate that. One, one twist that I've done on incorporating the Time Bank into a client account is I just said, hey, I'd be happy to give Time Bank members 15 minutes of credit if they support this thunderclap. Right. You know, so yeah, 15, that's awesome. 15 minutes is kind of like the lowest unit that we can, can give for one another. So it, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know, I coughed at the same time. It doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't cost me anything, but I just feel like, Hey, that's a nice gift I can give to my clients. I'm rewarding my network in some way for their time, acknowledging that, you know, they've got other things they could be doing or other things they could be sharing so it's just showing appreciation. And just one thing I don't think I addressed very clearly perhaps is, is the privacy policy. We did have some pushback like, oh, if I allow Thunderclap to access my Facebook, or do they have access to my whole friends list? Because that is a concern sometimes when you do those quizzes, you know, we're warned, you know, hey, don't do that because you're giving people access to all your friends list and they can be messaged and everything else. I'd say Thunderclap has one of the most complete and easy to understand privacy policies that I've seen. 
they say that the only reason that they access the friends list is just for the benefit of calculating the social reach because if they don't know how many friends you have then they don't have the ability to do that calculation so they say beyond that one day you know ability to post that's it that's you know the extent of their involvement with your Facebook privacy okay so obviously those things can change you want to stay on top of that and make sure that you've got the latest and greatest but you know I, I really think it's a win-win it's a pretty cool tool awesome well, I appreciate all the information. We'll be talking soon, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, well, hey, you're very welcome. Thanks again, you guys, for coming out. And, uh, you know, again, if, if you need me, I think you know where to find me. <laughs> you can find me at mysocialmediacoach.com if you just want, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, if group consults aren't your thing, if you've actually got a budget, or if you want to share, sometimes you want to share private information that would not be good in a group. I understand that. There's, there is still a time for a private consult, so I do offer that. But for everything else, if you like the, the spirit of this innovation and collaboration and kind of co-creating solutions, I really urge you to take a look at CoThrive. We actually were awarded with um, an award from Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland for playing a role in more conscious media. So I thought that was pretty neat. Cool. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today, but stand by. We'll be doing more of these things in the future, and I hope you can join us again. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you.